Now, hopefully this looks kind of familiar to you. Actually, if you know the uh, name of this figure, I'm going to put that into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to tell you precisely what type of figure we're dealing with. But the question here is we want to find the angles. So we have one of the angles of this figure. So this angle right here is 120 degrees, but we want to find these angles. So we have uh, angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. So if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. I will give you a bit of a clue here. Uh, you need to kind of focus in on this little notation, these notations along this figure. That will tell you what type of figure you're dealing with. And if you've never seen this before, don't worry about it. I'm going to explain all of this. But again, if you know how to do this problem, that's why I'm kind of speaking in, uh, in general terms right now, because I don't want to give too many things away for those of you who are excited to answer this question. Like, I know exactly what he's going to do. Well, go ahead and put your answers into that comment section, and I will go through this step by step in just one moment. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the answers right now, just in case you um, want to check your work or you just want to see the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the answers are. So um, uh, let's go ahead and just start this way. This angle right here, angle X is 60 degrees. Angle Y is 120 degrees, and angle Z is 60 degrees. So that is the solution to this particular problem. And what is the shape? What are we dealing with? We're dealing with a parallelogram. A parallelogram, it's a type of quadrilateral. So if you said, oh, uh, this is a quadrilateral, well, yes, in general terms, that is true. This is a quadrilateral, but specifically, this is a parallelogram, okay, a parallelogram. And a quadrilateral in geometry is a four-sided closed figure, okay? And a uh, parallelogram is a special type of quadrilateral. And I'm going to get into some uh, properties that we need to understand about parallelograms in order to answer uh, this question. But these are the solutions. And if you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Uh, now, but let's just take a look at the solution here real quick. It looks like this angle and this angle here um, are obviously the same. And then this angle and this angle here are the same. So uh, if, you're, if that kind of appeared to be the case, just visually looking at it, uh, well, you were on the right track, but let's go ahead and get into the specifics of parallelograms. Okay, so a parallelogram, again, is a type of quadrilateral. The quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. So, for example, this would be a quadrilateral, okay? Uh, a rectangle is a quadrilateral. So rectangles and a parallelogram you kind of, are kind of similar in a sense. Think of a rectangle. This would have 90 degree uh, right angles right here. But if I kind of push this over, if I kind of like pushed it this direction to make it lean on its side, you would effectively have a parallelogram. Okay. You know, just imagine if these things could kind of swing over. If I pushed it over, you would have a parallelogram. So what we want to know is the properties of parallelograms. And of course, if this is a type of quadrilateral, but um, let's take a look at some very important properties of parallelograms. And then we'll talk about the ones that we really kind of focus in on to solve this problem. But uh, before I do that, let's take a look at this notation. So this, this little arrow here along this line and this arrow right here, you have one arrow and one arrow. Here you have two arrows over here and two arrows over there. So when you have an arrow here and an arrow here on a line in geometry, what we're indicating is that this line is parallel with this line, okay? So this line is parallel with this line. And actually, I'm going to put this in. So one property of parallelograms uh, is that opposite sides are parallel, okay? And then this is parallel with this, okay? So we're indicating these. this two is distinguishing that this is different from this line, okay? So this line and this line, okay, specifically I'm putting the same number of arrows on this line and this line, this line and this line are parallel. So opposite sides are parallel. That by definition 
is a parallelogram, okay? If there's other uh, properties, you know, maybe other ways we can kind of define a parallelogram, but that's effectively what it is, right? We have that root word parallel, okay? All right, so let's talk about uh, some properties of parallelograms, and there's some, probably some other ones in here as well, but these are uh, some big picture properties that you want to know. So the first is opposite angles are congruent, okay? This is going to be the key to unlocking uh, the solution to this uh, question. So what opposite angles is this? This angle and this angle are opposite, okay? And congruent means they're effectively the same angle measure. So we had 120 degrees here, so it's pretty obvious that it'll be 120 degrees there, okay? So this angle and this angle right here are opposite. They are going to be the same angle. Now, opposite sides are also congruent, right? Now, we don't need that for this particular problem. Let me actually kind of erase this here so we can focus in. Don't uh, not let this get out of control in terms of this figure getting too crazy. But opposite sides are congruent, means uh, this length and this length are the same, okay? As long as this length and this length, okay? These two right here are opposite sides. They are the same distance and same thing with these sides here. So opposite sides are congruent. Now, another interesting thing about uh, parallelograms is the diagonals bisect each other. So let me erase this. And I'm just kind of loosely sketching this stuff. So the diagonals are, is this. If I drew a line from this vertex to this vertex and then here to here, let me see if I can kind of do this without yeah, messing this up and kind of freehanding right there. So these are the diagonals of the parallelogram. They bisect one another. It's uh, meaning that this right here, you know, where they intersect, this and this side are the same. So this side is equal to that side, and this side here, okay, or this distance is uh, congruent with this distance, i.e. the same uh, angle measure, okay, or same uh, distance, excuse me. All right, so that's another property of parallelograms. And then here is another key one that we need to know, and this is in, uh, for all quadrilaterals, is that the sum of the angles is equal to 360 degrees. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle plus this angle will be 360 degrees. Okay, so these are the general properties that you want to know about parallelograms. There's some other little things as well, but you know, if you uh, remember these, you're going to be able to solve just about all parallelogram uh, type of problems. But let's go ahead and apply what we now know, or what you may already have known, to solve this problem. So we want to find the angles. So we're given that this is 120 degrees. Well, it's opposite angle. Remember, opposite angles are congruent. So the opposite of this is angle Y. So angle Y is 120 degrees. Super easy, okay? So now we're left with figuring out with angle X and angle Z. But here's the interesting thing, right? We're calling this X and we're calling this Z, but this angle, X and Z, are the same. Okay, so I could just put angle X right here. Okay, there's a different variable, but don't let that trick you. We're using a different variable just to kind of uh, purposely confuse you, but don't be confused. Uh, this angle and this angle are the same. So in terms of a variable, this could be X and this could be X. So they're the same variable, i.e. X degrees is equal to whatever Z degrees is equal to. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to find these angles. And of course, we're, uh, we know they're going to be the same because opposite angles are congruent. All right, so let's use a couple of facts we already know about parallelograms. So here's 120 degrees. We now know that angle Y is 120 degrees, but we know that the sum total okay, of all these uh, four angles is 360 degrees. So if we take that 360 and we subtract away these two angles, one, uh, 120 and 120, or two times 120, let's subtract away these angles that we already know. So 360 minus 240 means that this angle plus this angle is 120 degrees, all right? So this is 120, this is another 120, it's 240. So we know we have a total of 360. We'll take away the 240. That leaves us with 120 degrees. That's how many degrees are left. And we know that this angle and this angle have to be the same. So a lot of you can say, well, just divide that by two so we can evenly split this angle and this angle between 120 degrees, which of course will be 60 degrees. That's basically it. Okay, that's how we get to 60 degrees as our uh, answer. But we can kind of more formally do that 
as saying that uh, 2 times x, this is x, z is the same thing as x. We could say 2 times angle x is equal to 120 degrees. There's a, other different kind of formulas you can write here, um, uh, write to express how to get this solution. And then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. We get x is equal to 60 degrees. And of course, z is the same thing as x. So z would be also 60 degrees. Or I think I said 60 degrees. Yes, I believe I did. Anyways, that's how we uh, solve this particular problem. Now, you might have come at this a little bit differently. That's perfectly fine as long as you justified your work. And there's a few other different uh, equations I could have um, created here to solve this problem. But effectively, you're still going to be using these same properties of a parallelogram, i.e. the sum of the angles is 360 degrees and opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so that is it for this particular problem. You know, hopefully you didn't find this too difficult, but, you know, basic figures, uh, you know, in geometry, we're talking about triangles, quadrilaterals, these things you want to know a lot about. And when it comes to quadrilaterals, there's all different sorts of quadrilaterals, special quadrilaterals that you need to know about. Uh, let's, you know, to name a few, let's just kind of rattle off a few. The square, rectangle, parallelogram, a rhombus, all those different type of things. There's properties that you're going to want to kind of dive deep into. So if you need more help with geometry and these type of problems, I would check out my geometry course. I really get heavy duty into that. I also kind of cover some of the basics of this in my pre-algebra course in my geometry section as well. And I do have additional YouTube uh, videos on um, you know solving basic figure problems like this. And you're going to run into these type of problems on all sorts of standardized tests. But uh, anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.